Do you hear that? Do you see that? There is more to what you see and hear in this shifted reality. I hear my guardian angel talking to me. This is Maria, and I have a guardian angel named Fija. Together, we will talk to you about the different shifted realities. Join us. You are listening to Ghosts in the Valley podcast. And I am Al Cooley, host of Ghosts in the Valley podcast. Today I have a past guest on, Beth Darlington. Beth is a paranormal investigator, an instructor, a historian. Beth is also the founder of the Access Paranormal Learning Lounge on uh, Facebook. The past four years in podcasting, I've become online friends with many of my guests. Beth is one of those that I can truly call my friend. That is what I love you know, most about this podcast. I can connect with people with the same interest as myself. And I constantly keep learning from my guests. The paranormal is a wide field. I mean, a field that I think is growing more and more each passing day. And with all that being said, welcome back to the show, Beth. It's uh, an honor having you back on. Oh, and it's been an honor to actually join once again on this fantastic show. And uh, since I've had you on, what, 2019, I was looking back in my uh, archives and uh, I thought it was sooner enough, but I guess it's been a minute, you know. A lot has happened in the last couple of years uh, with the pandemic. I'm sure it's uh, affected your investigations and everything. Oh, it's 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 hugely done. So I think for so many as well. You know, I, as we know, last time we spoke, I've literally only been uh, in the UK not even a week or two, if that. And uh, in that time, you know, uh, six months into it, I had all these plans about being able to go out, investigate locations, and going to events and really excited about um you know cracking into the scene here and seeing like and learning a lot more that that was that's what happened for six months and then covid reared its ugly head so (laughs) you grew up in uh, australia correct that is true yes and then you moved to england and then you moved back to australia correct that's exactly right yeah (laughs) (laughs) okay because like uh your hopscotch are back and forth you know (laughs) It's funny, in, in hindsight, part of me wishes I had stayed here and not moved back to Australia. But then again, if I hadn't, I wouldn't have helped create the paranormal community that is there today. And uh, Access Paranormal would never have been created. So, you know, we sit there and think, oh, you know, I, I, you know, I loved being here at the time, but I felt I had to go back because the person I was with at the time, their visa was running out. So we went, we've moved back, uh, back to Australia. But, you know, actually, in hindsight, it was good that I was there and then what knowledge I was able to gain from there and the people and the networking I was able to, to do and bring that back over here has actually helped. But yeah, I know it's like there, you know, I'm back in the UK, then I'm Australia, then back over here. But yeah, <laughs> definitely a hundred percent here. That's it. Not leaving. <laughs> yeah. I had a past guest on uh, not long ago, uh, William Tabone. Oh, he's uh, lovely. Uh, paranormal investigator out, out of Australia. And I just bought his book, which is, which is fantastic. And he had nothing but rave reviews for you. And so I was just wondering, how did you know, how do you know William Tabone? Oh my goodness. Such a lovely gentleman, as you know, like I often, uh, I use him as a bit of a sounding board when it came to meeting and networking with people in Australia. I thought if you, uh, if you had a problem with him or if you didn't like him face value, then there was something wrong with you. So <laughs> he was that kind of, he's that kind of lovable person. And uh, so I met him basically, like as with you, through the internet. Uh, they reached out to me, him and his beautiful wife, Mandy. And uh, I actually um, was talking with them. They came along to what was known as the very first Paracon Australia, which is the first paranormal conference of recent times in Australia. And they came along, and that's when I first physically met them. And then we got talking um, over, over time, probably maybe about a year or two afterwards, 
and the Kling brothers, uh, who uh, were um, very well known for the series of Ghost Lab, uh, were, which were chatting with them. And they, they said, look, we'd love to come to Australia. And they said, well, we, and they approached me as far as like uh, Bill and his, and his wife. Uh, do you want to, you know, how about we do a joint thing with Sydney and Melbourne for them to come over? And we organised it. And it was one of the most successful, um, uh, I guess you could say, international guests that came to Australia at that time. We had such a great time. The guys had such a great time. And literally, you know, they, they, they were like my family. And, you know, I still consider them as such as well. They're such great people. Um, you know, I, I went travelling with them in Gettysburg as well. So when I went and flew over there and we went to, all, you know, went to the battlefields, also with the Kling brothers as well. We stayed at their home, all this kind of stuff. So it was, it literally just seemed to grow. And, and I think that's what can kind of happen when, you get used to people spending time with people and sharing ideas and then it just grows even more. And I just really think, again, like, you know, he may obviously think highly of me, but I equally think highly of them as well. And um, they're really good people. And Cause I reached out to his wife to be on the, on the show. And uh, I think she was having, having at the time, she was having, having some uh, medical issues. So uh, uh, he, he uh, graciously said, I'll, I'll come on, you know, I've got, I've got a book coming out. And I uh, said, so that's awesome. You know, and uh, yeah, he was a uh, fantastic, a uh, nice, nice guy. And, and I thought, you know, what a small world, you know, you know, that he knew you. And I just was curious if you uh, did investigations together. Oh, yeah. We've investigated us in America, all different locations. They've come up to Sydney. I've gone down to Melbourne when I was living there. Um, and it's that kind of thing. It, again, I, you know, and I'd stay at their place as well. I've, I've, I've met all their children many times. You know, and I say children now, they're teenagers, you know, they, I, <laughs> right. you know, and they're just, oh, they're just like, you know, they're grown up now, they have jobs. When did that happen? <laughs> right. You don't think yourself are getting older you, until you see somebody else, especially a child that's now driving, you know. <laughs> yes, that's exactly right. Oh, well, so-and-so, he's got this job and this one, you know, this son's got a girlfriend now. And they're like, hang on, whoa, 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 whoa. They're like, wow, where did this happen? <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> no, it was really good. And they are really good people. I mean, you know, and I, I've had past guests on from, uh, JT, who is a host of the uh, Paranormal Sun out of New Zealand. And then I had uh, William Tabone, you know, out of Australia, yourself out of England, myself in the States, you know, and to me, it doesn't matter what part of the world you live at. It's almost these stories are all, all the same. Uh, I, I noticed that now when I'm, I'm actually now, obviously things, there's no restrictions here at the moment with COVID at the moment. So, uh, you know, there, there, as far as like travel or, or the, the, the um, enforcing of face coverings, although it's encouraged, but it's a guideline. But still, that means uh, events and investigations can continue. Like people can actually go out to locations where the people are feeling this um, activity occurring. And that's been really good because I'm finally gradually getting back in. Like literally, this is where I wanted to be a year and a half ago when I first spoke to you. you know, <laughs> wanted to be i'm finally gradually getting there and i'm experiencing some interesting phenomena i'm seeing other people experience interesting phenomena and it's nice just to be out there in the field and 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 getting out there and, and seeing and helping finding answers for people and it's just oh but then again um seeing it from a different perspective where you're in another country living in another country and seeing their methods and the history is very different here too of course it's a lot more it's a lot more varied um, and it's a lot more, um, obviously, there's, you know, there's 2,000 years worth of written history, basically. But back in Australia, you've got beautiful Indigenous Australian uh, culture, which is all spoken. So you've got 70,000 years worth of history, but you don't have it written down. So it's a lot harder to try and investigate some locations as it would be here. So, you know, in Australia, there's about 200 years. Here, it's 2,000 years. So, and it just makes investigating so much more incredible in that way where something might happen. So is it, is it located to the location? Is it located to the people? What's the phenomena? Oh, it's fascinating stuff. And again, it's finally nice to have that after, you know, pretty much the two years of crap that we've had. <laughs> you know, it's nice to be able to have that refreshing door opened and just hope that it stays open and um, COVID goes its merry way. And I'm being very, very uh, um, careful with my language in that way. <laughs> Before we go any further, I want to congratulate you on your uh, engagement. Oh, uh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I, I've seen that, you know, getting married. And uh, is your fiance interested in the paranormal field as well? Well, um, he's curious, very curious. I think I think he's intrigued. I'm not sure 100%, but when it comes to things that he comes across, like I think uh, recently he found a book about um, all the different uh, cemeteries in London. He's like, oh, you have to read this book. So I think he's fascinated. So he's not active, 
but he's definitely interested. So that kind of makes a big difference and a huge supporter for me. He just loves it, just thinks, yeah. And I, when I went on the weekend to an investigation, he goes, okay, now have a great time. I said, of course I will. He goes, and don't bring anything home. I said, but apparently there's nothing that exists. Why would I do that? <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> well, that's why I have a cross right here on my wall and behind me, you know. There you go, making sure. <laughs> I'm going to try to fix the audio problems I'm having with Beth since we are 4,000 miles apart. I'll be right back right up to these brief messages. Ghost stories are always scarier when they're told by the very people who experienced them. Hi, I'm Becky. And I'm Diana. And we're the hosts of the Homespun Haints podcast. We talk to people just like you who've come face to face with ghosts, demons, paints, and other strange paranormal phenomena. All of it makes for a chilling good time. So grab yourself a sweet tea, turn off the lights, and listen to some eerie, true ghost stories on Homespun Haints, wherever you get your podcasts. I'm not scared. Are you? Hello, this is JT, the host of The Paranormal Sun, coming to you live from Tower Studios here in Middle Earth. And you are listening to my friend Al on the Ghosts in the Valley podcast. And uh, one of my a couple questions here. Uh, uh, one is orbs. Uh, this seems to me to be like one of the least favorite topics, you know, that most podcasters want to talk about, you know, including myself, because, you know, uh, you get people, it doesn't matter if, if it is a true orb, I mean, you have people that will say it's a dust particle or a lint. And uh, I came across uh, something really interesting that you had posted about the great orb debate, you know, about the mother uh, films for paranormal uh, activity in her infant's cot, you know, above his crib. Yeah, it's and, and the thing is, it's the hardest thing when it comes to orbs is that, and like you say, it's like, it's, 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 it's really kind of almost divides a paranormal community a little bit. Like if people go, oh, I'm a, I'm a skeptical believer, but then you go, okay, so what do you think of orbs? And suddenly they know exactly what they think. So you literally, it's like it, it divides the waters. So people go, I really believe in them. I think there is a legitimacy of the fact they exist. And there are people like, there's no way on God's green earth this could actually happen. It's all just, uh, you know, it's all stuff that can be explained um, with dust and moisture and all sorts of things. So, yes, I think there's that also when, uh, say, for instance, with the, with the child and the cot and the whole orb, like you mentioned, um, again, you're dealing, again, it's it's a parent watching video footage of their child. So, again, there's an emotional connection to make sure the child is okay and mm-hmm. safe. So you're dealing with that as well. You also, is night vision, is the grayed out night vision they happen to have on their child. And so everything shows up on there, like literally any type of dust, any type of moisture will show up. But if it's not, they say, oh, but no, it's the first time I've seen this happen. He's like, yeah, but what time of year has it been? Like, are you are you, you're not say you don't clean your house? You know, you're going to have spirit <laughs> orbs everywhere. Like, that's the case. My place would be infested. <laughs> it's, just, it's, you know, it's, it's a bit of balance. It's taking into consideration. Okay, so as a mother feeling her child, they're, they're in a room that, um, you know, it's got lots of carpet, so that's going to hold a lot more dust as opposed to not often with with, with flat surfaces and then little things like that. You keep that in consideration. You take that in and then you go, okay, so what else could be happening here? And then children do react to certain things. I know, I know a lot of people I've worked with over the years are the mediums that say that child children will pick up um, potentially something from, you know, a a spirit perspective more so than humans. So you take that into consideration. It's, it's, it's uh, so many layers to it. So many layers. Yeah. You had mentioned, you know, like uh, going to Gettysburg, you know, and that's where I've seen most of my orbs. You know, it's like it's astounding on um, the what I captured there. You know, uh, especially over the battlefields and, and some of these homes that were uh, the ghosts were. I, I'm, I'm just like, there's so many orbs everywhere, and to me, it was hard to say, okay, there, that's all dust particles, mm-hmm. you know, or moisture. And that's because it happened different nights and different times, and same same event, same same outcome. Absolutely. And I know people that have seen them with their naked eye, like literally have physically seen an orb that is glowing, that it has its own light source and it's traveled a certain distance and it will stop. And then it will either disappear or zoom up or zoom down or however it's it's, its behavior is not uh, normal, not something that we can explain. So there are people that physically have seen orbs and you can't say that person, well, you didn't see that. Like, well, of course they have. So I from a from a recording perspective, I'm a 
fairly skeptical, but at the same time, um, people have actually physically seen them as well. So we can't completely rule it out. Yeah. And, you know, it's like uh, anything, like even being a paranormal investigator, uh, you want to go and rule out that it's not a ghost or spirit. I mean, it could be a pipe or a something big, banging against the house, you know, but when it's not, it's not, you know. Yeah. And I think the same is true with orbs. But on that clip that you had posted, there was over 10 million views. Yeah. Yeah, it was. It was. And again, it's like, a, it's like I said, it's the faux pas of the Australian or any type of paranormal <laughs> community. It's like literally, it's like you mentioned the O word. And, and if you say that in public, people kind of look at you strangely. But no, no, orbs, orbs, people, it's orbs. And it literally is that kind of thing where it is, it draws so much uh, confliction with people because so people are very, very quick to dismiss it. And I understand that 100%. But I've always been somebody that tries to be as open as possible. And I will sway towards the skeptic side quite a bit sometimes. And there's other things I'm like, mm, I don't know. And I sway towards the, I, they say believer side, but more more open to the you know, paranormal phenomena side. And I think it's important to, to know that people can sway either side. And But just be open, to be open to the fact that well, we don't really know that. Do we, do we, you know, yes, a majority of it can, from a recording perspective could possibly be attributed to that. But at the end of the day, you know, if someone's experiencing it or they've seen it or there's been something that's followed afterwards, like, let's explore that. Let's not just suddenly shut it down, because if you shut it down too much, you, you, you know, you're walking around with a bias already. That's that's knocking out any uh, possible openness about you know, what could actually happen. We don't know exactly how this world works 100 percent. I, I agree. You had mentioned a, a few years back that what scared you the most was uh, demonic possession. And then you said came back and said that uh, something may scare you, scare you even more. And we didn't touch about on this last time we talked, and that was SHC, the spontaneous human combustion. Yes, that's right. <laughs> it's, it's still there. I'm still scared. I'm yeah, still yeah. So I want to talk to you a little bit about that because we didn't t- touch on that last time. It does. It so does because it's such. It, I think it's it's the fact that it's something I won't have ever control over. It's something. It's a it's a type of phenomenon. Like, of course, hello. I'm talking about the paranormal generally. It's spontaneous phenomena anyway. You're not going to have control of that too. But this is like kind of making me want to be deaf. You know what I mean? So, I'm kind of a little uh, apprehensive, uh, if you could say, with um, the, the possibility of that ever happening. And there's so many different theories. Some people say, oh you no, know, someone has a cigarette near a heater or something. And I mean, we're talking like 56 years ago when people would do that you know obviously things have changed a lot since then but you know i said oh she's you know okay so strike that off the list of best possible you know spontaneous human combustion scenario what else is going to be happening so but it is it's because it's such a um you know you don't know what the person has gone through like seconds beforehand did they know it was happening because there's no sign of a struggle it just happens and they're there you know, there's no like they, they're lying on the floor, they're sitting on a chair. It's like, so it just happens so quickly. They just die instantly. It's like, but do you not feel pain? How did you know it was not going to happen? Um, was it inflamed? Like it's such an intense heat. There's scorch marks in all sorts of parts of the, the, the location when it happens. So it's an intense heat, an instant death. And I mean, I haven't said goodbye to anybody. This is other part as well. So I'm like, I'm really annoyed, very stubborn. But it is, it's that, it's, I think for me, it's that lack of control. But it's like, imagine sitting there at work and suddenly you burst into flames. Like, I didn't get paid for this. <laughs> it's like, it's just... Right. I, I had, a, con- I had a, a conversation with a friend of mine like a year ago. And he was basically touching on that, on somebody he knew in the medical field. The person had pe- had died from inside out, from burns in his organs inside out. So and he was talking about uh, spontaneous uh, human combustion. You know, I, I never heard that. <laughs> I love learning new things, but I've never heard of uh, the body burning inside. And it's from the inside out. That's super mm-hmm. sp- right. freaky. Like it, that's a whole other, I mean, it does kind of fall under the paranormal sort of, or, you know, supernatural style sort of um, category. But then you think, oh, gosh, what part of biology would that fit into? It doesn't because it's, you know, people, oh, you know, you, you see people with, with their limbs are okay and their, their arms are okay and their head's okay, but their torso is just burnt to a cinder. It's like, how does that happen? How does your body decide, no, oh, today I'm just going to burn myself inside out? How's, how's, <laughs> uh, what? What, 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 you know, again, it's that, you know, what's the perfect lasagna or not perfect um, that allows that to happen in a body? Like it's fascinating stuff, but absolutely scares the bejeebies out of me. And that's you, and still does. So you're 100% <laughs> right. <laughs> 
So you, know, you hear about the UFOs over these uh, farmlands where the animal is sucked dry of its blood or internal parts gone, you know, or the, or the, the heads are missing and there's no blood. I mean, mm. uh, you just wonder what, with the human body. And then like you were saying, there's different, there's different, uh, parts of that, of burning, you know, maybe burping and blowing out fire. You know? that's, that's exactly right. After a curry, I completely understand that, but yeah, I know what you mean. <laughs> uh, but you know, I, I just came up upon that and that I seen that you had mentioned that. And I brought back memories of my buddy last year. And I was uh, curious because I've never talked to anybody in the paranormal about this. Mm, I'd love to go to Skinwalker Ranch. I know that probably sounds very uh, 2018. Yeah, I watched every one of those. And that's that's what what I was referring to is, you know, like the animals that were uh, affected. And, And since then, I've had guests I've talked to that. Same thing, you know, they're the same incidents, you know, where an animal is, uh, the death is not right. I mean, it's just not, it doesn't lie, it doesn't fall on our guidelines of how an animal should die or uh, where, where did the blood go? Yeah, that's exactly right. And and again, it's, it's, it's understanding animals and biology, but also what nature does, like how would an animal end up being that way? And it's so unnatural that we're like, well, this, there has to be another explanation to this. Um, I guess again, again, you can, and with the awesome thing about the paranormal, you know, as as a topic, then it can you know, spread on to um, things like cryptozoology. So, okay, so there's other animals out there that we're still trying to understand that, or, you know, or creatures of some sort that we we don't have a lot of exposure to, or there's sightings of that people see. They haven't been verified by science, like uh, little things. You know, you can't sit there and go, well, you know, people all around the world have seen this one particular, like say for instance, Yeti or Bigfoot or or Yowie. You know, we can't sit there and say these people haven't seen something all around the world for you know the last fifty odd years. They've seen something out there, and they, or they all their reports uh, collaborate with a very similar thing. So again, it's like how how does nature how is nature dealing with this? Like you know, the sense of like animals dying in a certain way to animals actually existing in a certain way. So I mean, we don't know everything that's under the ocean. You know, there's, mm-hmm. there's you know there's so much under there. There's there's there's, there's uh, creatures there that have never seen light, and I mean, we'll never see them, but they're there. But you know, so it makes you think. There's just this world is incredible. Yeah, you were talking about the Skinwalker Ranch. Mm-hmm. Another uh, topic, you know, that came out last year was the uh, Pentagon's release of the uh, UAPs. Uh, mm-hmm. What's your thoughts on that? Um, I think it's still too early uh, to to actually take that in a bit. As far as um, I think there needs, to, I think, yeah, I think it's a little bit too early to to make any assumptions on that as per yet. I'm I'm glad. I mean, obviously, there's uh, Project Blue Book as well, which you know, there's there's bits of that obviously coming out and has been out in parts as well. So. Uh, having been to Area 51 myself, or to the edge of, sorry, not been to because you get shot. <laughs> Clearly, right. I do not have mm-hmm. I do not have any free piercings from the um, federal government. But no, it's um, I think I I personally want to spend more time and actually go through it properly to actually make an, a proper assumption and or a, a view on that. Um, again, I I a, a side thought from that as I think it's very. I'm going to say politely, but not politely saying, I think it's arrogant to think we're the only people in the universe. Um, I think, you know, how vast that of what our knowledge is to think that, oh, okay, well, there's no such thing as aliens. They've never visited. That's it. You know, uh, okay, it's closed. I think it's extremely arrogant to think that way. Um, th- th- there's way too much going on. There's way too much possibility. Um, so I think in, situa- in literally in situations like that, I want to read more, understand more, and then make a bit more of an idea of that. But I think it's, it's very um, wise to be open about this kind of stuff. Like you were saying, you know, the universe is so huge. I mean, we're just, we're just a speck. I mean, <laughs> you know, and I love the, the, uh, what happened just recently when they released that, uh, uh, telescope, uh, mm. that can look into, uh, the next galaxies, you know, so it, it's going to be interesting to see. I mean, my the information coming back might be after we're long gone, <laughs> mm. <laughs> you know, but it is uh, interesting just to see that you can see into the, another dimension of the universe you know and we're just a little planet there's so much out there then i was just i was just curious but you know because uh, when the pentagon used uh, released those uaps i was excited that they did it that they finally are recognizing what millions of people around the world are finally seeing you know the unidentified objects in the sky submerged submergible uh craft Mm -hmm. you know and uh, and it's hard to deny that you're 
highly trained pilots are capturing this. It's not your Joe Blow guy next door that, <laughs> you know, yeah. drinking tequila is out there spotting these things. These guys are professionals and mm -hmm. uh, hundreds of millions of dollars in these uh, aircrafts. So I don't pass that off. You know, what, what bothers me is about the people that have lost their lives, you know, mm -hmm. in the past since, uh, uh, Roswell, you know, and, and before, yeah, you, you can't explain where their body is. Yeah, that's exactly right. And just, you know, it's I, I, <laughs> I remember picking up a book. Well, I'm very one. Of, I'm not a big novel and or um, uh, book person reader. I'm I'm very much a visual, you know, videos or or mm -hmm. lectures, like visual learning in that sense. So for me to pick up a book and read it for end from beginning to end. That, that can take many years. <laughs> but one of the first ones I picked up was about a detective that was actually on the site of Roswell when it happened, and it's his expose, basically. And he's like, this is what I found. These are the, this, There was an alien there. This is what we did. This is what we did to cover it up. And I was absolutely fascinated by it. It was, I was so intrigued by it, but it opened up my mind. And, he's, you know, he spoke about the fact the possibility is like, well, think about the advancement in technology from the time that Roswell happened to even five or ten years. Like there was such an extreme advancement of technology, like night vision goggles and silicon and all this kind of thing. Because that's been, he, goes, he believes, was taken, the, the technology from that was taken and then um, eventually implemented out into society. And I thought that was a really interesting thing to 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 obviously read and obviously uh, learn a bit about as well. Like I said, keep your mind open. It's, you know, you never know. It, to me, it made sense. I, I, I know some people think, oh, you're sounding crazy, but at the end of the day, I think it's best to, best to keep your mind open. Like, because it made sense to me, you know, it's, it's such a quick advancement. You're right. You know, like 40 years ago when I was in Florida uh, visiting my sister-in-law and uh, her neighbor was a retired uh, Air Force. I don't know what he did in the Air Force. I do know he was at Roswell. I do know that he knew a lot about that incident because uh, he worked there at that time. Wow. And so that was my most, I think one of my most interesting conversations with, was, was with him. Mm. Uh, he couldn't tell me everything that happened, you know, uh, naturally, you know, but he did say all the aircraft or all the, the debris or whatever they, they, that falls from the skies that hits the earth is at Wright Patterson Air Force Base in, in uh, Dayton, Ohio. Mm -hmm. You know, so my wife and I were there. And you, you know, like you say, you can't get near like, you know, uh, hangar eight, 18, you know, you can't get, you can't get, can't get near that. Uh, but isn't it interesting that they, in their gift shop, they have uh, <laughs> trinkets I you can buy. You know, I love it. It's uh, the best. I, I just, I, I went, I went to the area 51, a little cat was um, a little alien. And I've got, I've got my area 51 number plate. And <laughs> so, well, as if you're not, I came from Australia. <laughs> so you know, I was there, to. you know, and, and I thought that was just interesting. He said, everything is sent there. You mm -hmm. know, so everything that was from uh, Roswell was sent to Wright Patterson. Mm -hmm. uh, and what he basically told me was, you know, the best part of that whole story was the cover up of the cover up. You know, mm. and so he, it was really a deep conversation, but he really, uh, he didn't brush it off as like being crazy or nonsense. It was uh, something that was unexplained that, uh, is still there, you know? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I think, uh, it's, it's, uh, as I said, uh, you know, and reiterating, I think it's silly to think that, uh, you know, we're the only, we only live creatures somewhat in in this vast vast universe and you know to think that it's a nothing that is is more advanced and has not made its presence known in in different ways over hundreds and thousands of years may not even been of recent years you know so i think uh yeah i think a mind is is, is better to be open with that kind of stuff absolutely 100 percent. i'll be right back with the rest of my conversation with beth darlington Hey, I'm your host, Wendy, and you just listened to another episode of a Juicy Pear podcast. Thanks for listening to the show. I really appreciate it. And I would love it if you could subscribe, rate, and leave a review. Each week, I have new content, and I love talking with creatives. Tell your friends and family. And if you're feeling led, hey, you can buy me a coffee on a juicypearpodcast.com. This is Jerry Ayers with Supernatural Investigators of Minnesota, and you're listening to Ghost in the Valley podcast. And, you know, another thing, another topic uh, I wanted to ask you about was when you're hit with something, somebody else hit you with the same topic. And it was uh, doppelgangers. Yes. 
What's your thoughts on that? Oh, fascinating. I interviewed a lovely lady who was putting all sorts of cases around the world for a book. And I, I remember her name escapes me. And it's, it's terrible that I feel, I've forgotten her name. She was a lovely lady. I interviewed her on my own podcast. Mm-hmm. And um, she said there's doppelgangers and there was, I think she said shadow twins or same twins. So there's, there's a difference. Doppelgangers uh, was a definition, um, a definition of, of somebody seeing somebody who looked like them and then they were to pass or have something bad. But then same twins, I think it was, was one where you actually see somebody that looks like, so much like you um and nothing bad is to happen to you so and i thought that was interesting because a lot of time you and i and anyone else goes doppelganger oh it must just be somebody that looks like you but apparently it's quite a foreboding thing that means you're going to pass or have bad things happen to you so I thought that was fascinating the first thing i learned when, when, when talking with her but i think it's really interesting i mean technically you know i i have an identical twin so i'm like i already have one so I, i've ticked that box anyway <laughs> but <laughs> so but um we ought to come to ohio we have a uh, every year a festival it's a little town called Twinsburg. No way. And it's a festival. All twins get together on that one day. <laughs> That'd be weird and creepy at the same time. It is, you know. <laughs> that sounds awesome. But this doppelganger, but yeah. you know, when he was talking, the last person I was talking to about it, he was telling me, we put, looked it up, and there were supposedly by scientists, you have six people that's you out there that not only looks like you identical, but also has the same characteristics, talks like you, looks like you, dresses like you, actions like you around the world, you know? And yet another guest told me that it's not just of this day and age. It could have been like back in the 1700s, you had a Beth uh, Darlington look just, just like you, you know, had the same characteristics as you. Mm-hmm. And oh, oh, yeah, it's a deep, it's a deep subject. And then my brother at the same time, as I'm having this conversation with three different people, my brother sends me a picture and it looks like me <laughs> you know, without, even, without, without even talking to him about it. And I'm like, this just totally blew my mind. I mean, I'm like looking at myself, you know, that's crazy. And, it, and then the same night I have a guest on and we're talking about doppelgangers, you know, mm. and that's when I really, I said, you know, this is coming at me pretty quick mm-hmm. and, uh, I don't know, it would be wild to run into somebody that's identical to you. I mean, you have your identical twin or your twin, I'm done. <laughs> you know, it would be very confronting. I think because it's, I mean, I know who mine is, but if someone then was to turn up in the street and look like me, then yeah, I would be quite taken aback, particularly, you know, it's. And then you think, okay, is it, is, is it a type of genetics where if you're genetically, don't even have to be from the same family, but your family was had similar genetics to someone else's family. So, of course, someone else is going to look quite similar to you. But, I mean, that's a one in a million to look really similar, almost like a twin to somebody else. And then, of course, my mind goes, ooh, maybe this is a version of string theory. <laughs> it's like it's oh, it could like, be. Yeah. <laughs> right. so this, and then we get into a whole other ball game with that stuff. So, it, you know, it maybe there's something where, you know, there's two different, like you said, like, you know, it's the, the sliding doors thing where someone's actually chosen to make a decision and then it's ended up being this and then they end up having a child that end up being the same age as you or similar age and then they grow up and then you end up looking like them and they look like you, but then you just happen to cross. Like it, literally, the, the you know, the world's your oyster when it comes to this. It's incredible. But, yeah, it's, I think, you know, to have, I mean, I've seen um, on, on Facebook, not that you believe everything on Facebook, but there's mm-hmm. been a couple of interesting photos, and I'm sure you've come across them as well, where there has been somebody from the 1800s and there's been somebody from now, and they literally look like the same person. And you think, oh, you know, it's not like it's, you know, photoshopped in any way. Like that looks pretty convincing. So how can somebody hundreds of years later from a completely different part of the world look like somebody in the other part of the world, like it's got to be some kind of weird genetic thing going on. Oh man, it fascinates me. Right. You know, same here. Uh, what's your thoughts on life after death? Oh man, how much time do we have? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's like, so, so Al asks, what's the meaning of life? Well, <laughs> uh, right, right. Well, there's some people that believe that uh, when you die, you you either go to heaven or you go to hell. There's no in between and there's no waiting. Yet mm-hmm. there's other people who believe you go somewhere. Let's like say if you don't believe in heaven or hell, 
And I had a guest on that told me that there is no heaven or hell. So when you move a spirit on or they move themselves on, you're actually killing that spirit. So they're not going anywhere. Wow. Uh, so, I mean, you have, you have all these different people with all these different uh, views on, you know, death. So I was just curious. I mean, do you, mm. I personally believe there is life after death. Mm. I, I'm, I'm definitely very open to it. Definitely very open to it. Um, I, I think from what I know from this side of the fence before passing over is that there is something. There is definitely something on the other side what it is i don't know well your life after death that could that be a ghost i mean could your ghost it could be or spirit uh because we i say really i say that i'm writing a book right now and the book is on a house i grew up in that was haunted and that we're talking 50 some years ago 55 years ago when i was 12 years wow. old so uh to me that girl that was i seen in the house mm. And then when we moved out, well, we lived there four years. So we moved out, our landlord of that house told my mother that a young girl died in that house, mm. you know? Uh, so was that girl that I seen, my sister seen, you know, like five other people saw, was this her? Yeah. Uh, so that's, a, that's just a, that's another deep, deep question. Oh. Fantastic. I was about to say, good, let us know when you finish the book. <laughs> yeah, this taking me forever because, you know, it's a true story. But I'm trying to, uh, I'm, I'm digging back in my memory and I have, I'm mm -hmm. talking to my sister and uh, a few other people that were there at that time that are still living. Mm -hmm. And then I'm trying to find information on that house that I grew up in because the house has, had burnt down mm -hmm. since then. So it's, there's no history of it, you know. So I have to go through the library to look at past histories of these homes <laughs> you know in, in the area and also on the yeah, city hall what information they had all they can tell me is the house was uh, burnt down in 2005 mm -hmm. talking to a psychic medium that was on the show and she was talking about you know how can a can a ghost or a spirit manifest into uh, a property or land mm -hmm. or was that spirit in that house was it was a house built on burial grounds. Mm, mm, that's true. So true. And I often uh, ask, you know, so for the fact that you, you know, grown up in a, a in a house and seen this 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 apparition, and, and for me, it's like, okay, so why would an apparition show themselves? And that's where I go. And I was like, is she distressed? Is it? Is it wasn't just? Was it just you? Was it other people? Like I start to think, well, you know, when it comes to hauntings like that, I think, you know, the first thing I go to it, because a lot of mediums will say to me, there has to be a reason why a spirit will show itself or do what it does to that person. There has to be a reason. We're not always going to know everything. Trust me. If we knew that happened, we'd be able to set everything up. There'd be no such thing as spontaneous phenomena. You know, it would just be mm -hmm. planned. <laughs> if we knew how it worked on the other side, that'd be great. But it is, it's like, okay, so why, why were you at that time? Why? And then, of course, the place burning down, all that kind of stuff. Like that kind of stuff really fascinates me. Right, and I've never seen her seen a ghost since then. So, I'm, mm. so, so it's like I'm not a person who sees things like, or at that time, nor did I even believe in it. You know, so it was like you know, I seen her when we moved in. I seen her when we moved out. So those four years in between, I didn't see anything. But it mm. was it was uh, those four years in between was a whole lot of activity. You know what I'm saying? Uh, not just with, with me, but with my friend who came over to spend the night, you know, and he did not spend the night. Uh, he had his mother pick him up probably about midnight and he was not, and he never came back to that house. So, I mean, so it was, it was uh, it wasn't an evil thing. No, it was, it was just a, if I knew what I know now, then who do you talk to in 1967? Yeah. Who do you talk to about this? Yeah. Because yeah. especially when your parents don't believe you and that's never happened in front of them, who do you talk to? So I have people on my show like, damn, why they come on the podcast or other podcasts, because they can talk to someone who will listen to them. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Hundred percent, because it's and that's what uh, when um, the information I provided for people who want to look at doing private residential cases, it's it's not not necessarily trying to find another spooky place to investigate. You know, you're dealing with people's experiences, their fears. Um, how they're dealing with it, and also 
feeling isolated, like as as you would have felt as well. You're in a house, you're experiencing this, uh, and some of your friend has experienced it, never came back to the house. But then, like you said, who are you going to talk to? So when people approach investigators that are, do take on cases, that's the first thing is compassion. It doesn't matter if it is not haunted or, or is haunted. That At that point is irrelevant. It's actually actually compassion for someone who's experienced something they're not really sure what the hell's going on sort of stuff so you know and it's that kind of thing so it's like it's not like oh let's go explain let's go you know sort of um, hang out in someone's haunted home it's like no 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 it's a whole different ball game it's a whole different seriousness that a lot of people don't realize and about it it's literally people management and compassion for what they've experienced because it's you know being frightened in your own home especially when you're a child especially like that's really intimidating you don't want to be scared in your own home you want to feel safe that's that's your haven but mm-hmm. especially also when you've got parents that you're that are, are very skeptical about what you're saying oh well you know it doesn't matter blah blah blah. Or you didn't see that's like no i know what i saw but they're gonna try and you know do the best they can yeah if i mentioned a ghost to my mom then I'm, I'm like i'm i'm grounded you know mm-hmm. so it's don't talk crazy crap you know it's like uh so that's what you know that's why you didn't have anybody really except my sister when she's she witnessed what went on and it's an interesting book i don't want to get too much out there but i had not had a guest on uh since then and she's telling me her ghost story and i'm sitting back listening to her story and she says how are you still there <laughs> like i was so intrigued with her story because her story was my story mm. everything that happened to her happened to me mm. and I'm i bet like, that must have felt wonderful wonderfully validating the fact well, that at least you, you know I told her, you're not going to believe this. Cause if you read my book, I said, when it does come out and you read, it's not that I stole your story, but what you're, <laughs> what you're, what you're telling me has happened to me. Mm. Cause you know, you're told your whole time growing up, you're, you know, ghosts don't exist. It's, they just don't exist. It's not out there. It's in your imagination. You're making it up, you know? And so I just stopped talking about the family and friends. Cause you know, you lose friends along the way, especially if you're in that era. I mean, today, I think you're a little more with the internet and everything that's out there, you have other avenues you can go to mm. or listen to different podcasts, or different radio shows, watch T ghost hunters or whatever's on TV. But back then there was really not much out there, you know, until Art Bell came along with coast to coast radio. And when I went into the paranormal, because, you know, I basically, what happened to me in 67, I can't go out here, even though I've never seen Bigfoot or, or a UFO. I'm not going to tell somebody it's not there. You know, that's like them telling me what didn't happen in your house, your upcoming events, probably by the time this episode is released, these events will already have taken place. <laughs> but I was, I was curious about a couple of them. You have the parapsychology Australia online conference. What's that about? Um, that's, um, an online one that I'm attending as opposed to actually being a part of. So there's the, a couple of them I've kind of pulled back a bit because obviously it's, it's everything's starting to slowly pick up again. So as far as actually me being able to go to any of these, um, in the future, it's been um, obviously quite mm, COVID-y. <laughs> so mm-hmm. I was kind of <laughs> decided to throw a sort of like a, a, a fire extinguisher on, on that one. But um, I'm actually attending what is known as ASAP's conference, which is happening in September, um, in, in the first weekend of September. And I went to the first one when I first actually came over here and I really enjoyed it. Um, ASAP is A-S-S-A-P for anyone who wishes to to look it up as well. Really good logical information, great organisation. So I'm, I'm, you know, I'm going to that conference as, as an attendee. Um, I obviously had uh, spoken at their online conference um, a year and a half ago as well, which was really great to be a part of it. That was their conference, but obviously was done online because of COVID. Um, that was really great and, and such an honour to be able to do that as well. So you're going there uh via virtual conference or you go actually going to australia well this one this particular one for asap is actually in the uk it's in the bath oh, university oh, in bath. Okay. yeah yeah i make my gosh yes it's gonna be i as i said it's probably because of uh having to pay for a wedding in not too distant future what <laughs> <laughs> one's finances are slightly restricted when it comes back to going to australia to, to hang out with peeps there so i will eventually get there definitely in the next couple of years but it's going to take a couple of years because because it's not down the road from the UK, but yeah. So as far as anything in Australia at the moment, possibly not as yet, um, but definitely a couple, definitely places here in the UK, hundred percent, of course. Which is nice, finally, to to have that as well. What is the uh, satanic flea market? 
oh, so that they have that every year. And I go because I'm just curious. I'm not definitely not a Satanist, you know. That's just I'm just I'm just curious mm-hmm. to see how all this stuff works. I just think it's I'm just thinking, you know, walking with an open mind that I'm going to, I think is in the next month. Hopefully, fingers crossed, I can if I'm I'm going to be in London because half my time is in London, the other half is in Kent, the Kent countryside, which is um south of London, where uh, my fiance lives. So I live part-time with him and then part-time in my flat in London. No, it sounds terrible. I know the third world problems, really, but <laughs> so you have the best of both worlds. You've got the English countryside and you've got the beautiful city of London. Mm-hmm. But um so yes, yeah, so hopefully I would. And that, I went, as I said, a couple of years ago, and had all different weird stuff. And and they've also in the in London, they've got the Lost Boys Pizza Restaurant, which I want to go to as well in the next couple of months. And they have like black sourdough pizza, and they have got like you know um, a pentagram sauce on it, and all that kind. Of, anyway, so it's really just you know just it's just fun stuff. It's just different. It's out there, very um, eclectic in that way. So mm-hmm. and of course it'll have to be in Camden. If anyone knows London, Camden's very much open to that sort of side of life. But relax, everybody. <laughs> I'm not rolling in and and having a laugh with the devil, the Satan. It's okay. I'm fine. <laughs> I'm just, I've always had an open mind to very different and eclectic things. So that's where that comes from. Then you have the uh, psychophysiological investigation of trance mediums. Yeah, that's an online one, I think. So oh. that's going to be really interesting again to attend as well because it's kind of, I think it's important to because there's the Society of Psychical Research here, which is SPR, and they're a great organisation. And a lot of their um, online events can be, obviously they are very quite academic, which is great, but I think it's also good to attend them to get a a level of that as well. It's not, uh, I think it's good to involve yourself with that level of knowledge. Now I am very, uh, I'm somebody who's never been to university and I do sometimes struggle with the language that people use with academic languages and in research papers. So there are times when I'm reading, trying to read a research paper that within the first paragraph, my mind's already gone. I'm like, I'm struggling to concentrate on this <laughs> fantastic information. So attending this online stuff can be really good because it's a lot more interactive and visual. And I, I, for myself, tend to understand it better. I think it's important as investigators to be open to academic information and uh, research that has been happening for the last 150 years. So we're not kind of like, you know, reinventing the wheel when it comes to doing our own work. So, yeah, really good. And what else do you have coming up this year? Um, there's a couple of projects on the side, and I hate saying that because then I turn around and say, but I can't say anything until I can actually say <laughs> something. So it's one of those things, unfortunately, I wish I could say, but there's things I've, I've been involved with, which I'm uh, wonderfully and wholeheartedly appreciative of uh, being asked to be involved, it, particularly since I haven't been able to make as much room um, and progress that I wanted to when I first got here to the UK because of COVID, it really hindered it. So I'm actually quite um, thankful to have been asked to be part of certain projects. So eventually at some point I will be able to actually mention that. But, uh, yeah, I also have been going to um, Ghost Club uh, meetups as well. The Ghost Club are fantastic, are very in, uh, very interactive. They have meetings, they have talks. They're now um, Their talks are uh, face-to-face, so you go into the centre of London go there um, and and just all different types of um different types of talks different types of topics all, it's fantastic it's really good so I'm, I'm very happily active uh within the ghost club as well as the society of psycho research and asset as well so yeah it, it just <laughs> keeps me busy this keeps me which is great <laughs> not complaining well thank you beth um, i'm going to put all your links on the bottom of this episode thank you for coming back on and uh, sharing some more stories with me and knowledge. And I thank you very much. Thank you so much for having me once again. It's always a pleasure having Beth Darlington on the show. It's been a couple of years. I'm sure I will have her back on again. Do go to Beth's links at the bottom of this episode. And I will see you in two weeks with another great episode on Ghost in the Valley podcast.